Hi, welcome back. I'm standing up here on a stool so I can get a little bit of a bird's eye view on the bottom of the cabinet. And right now I'm installing the casters. Now what I did was I put the caster in place and got it centered where I wanted it and marked the whole locations. And then I drilled a 7 64th inch pilot hole about an inch deep into the material and I'm using number 10 round head screws. There's actually sheet metal screws, but they're gonna work just great. These are an inch and a quarter long, and I'm just driving them in. And uh, if driving them in gets a little bit too tough for the driver, I also have a, a regular manual screwdriver here where I can come around and tighten them up. Now I'm using swivel locking casters on all four. That means you've got to lock all four wheels to really get it stationary, but I find that when all four wheels lock like that, it really is a much sturdier assembly on the floor. And since we're going to be using this as an in-feed and out-feed table, I think that's really necessary. Well, I'm going to go ahead and get the rest of these wheels mounted and then we can start actually assembling this in-feed table and this storage cabinet for under the table saw. So let's get going. little hint uh, this thing is starting to get heavy so when you go to turn it over lock your casters so that it doesn't get away from you while you're tipping the unit over all right so now what we need to do is we need to install our square aluminum stock so let's take a look at how we're going to do that all right, so the next step in assembly is to get our aluminum square stock installed in the four legs. Now, each piece of this aluminum stock is labeled. This one is the left front. This is the left front leg. And you'll recall we tapped the holes through both sides, but we marked the side that's facing the uh, notch here. So we're going to put this in and we're going to install a threaded stud. Now this is two and a quarter inches long. It's a one quarter 20 thread. You could cut these yourself. I ordered them to length because the ends are finished very nice when you get them cut to length at the supplier. And all of this information about where to get these supplies will be available when the video series is done. But we want to thread this in to this stock to where it catches the threads on the reverse side of the aluminum tube, but doesn't go through so far as to interfere with it sliding. And that way we'll be able to put a knob on here that will tighten up and it'll hold this aluminum stock in place. So the question becomes how far in to thread this when you really can't see it. So this is what I've kind of worked out. If you'll recall, I had this scrap here that I used to test the drill and tap set. So we'll go back to this scrap and we'll thread this in until it comes flush with the other side. Not poking out, but just flush with this other side. And then what we want to do is we want to back this out exactly two rotations. And the easy way to do that is just hold the stud and turn this two rotations. Then we're going to use this Loctite thread locker. This one is 
their Red 271. It's supposed to be heavy duty. We're going to take that and we'll run a bead right around next to the aluminum here and that will show up and tell us where we are when we thread it into the real deal here. So I've rehearsed this a couple of times. I guess it's the only time now to just see if it's going to work. All right, so here we go. Now, again, I'm going to thread this in. Get this flush on the back side. And then I'm going to back it out two turns. And I'm going to put a little bit of this thread lock right here on this bolt. Stuff's really watery. And then before I take that out all the way, I'm going to put a little bit on the back side back here. And a little bit over here on the front side. And wipe off any excess that leaked out. Now, drop this down in here. And we should be able to, yeah, I can see that mark on there real well. You can see right where the thread locker is. So we're going to thread this in here. And I'm going to go in until I can't see the thread lock anymore. And there we go. Now, according to the directions on the package, this sets up in 10 minutes and cures completely in 24 hours. So um, I'll let that sit for 10 minutes. And then I want to check it and make sure that it can't be easily backed out. Because with this knob on here, when we turn it in and tighten it, that'll be fine. But when we go to loosen it, it could unthread this and we don't want that to happen. So, let's let that sit for 10 minutes and we'll see how we did. Okay, now all of these are put together. This was the first one that we did. And it's been in there for 15 minutes or so. And I can tell you that no matter how hard I try, I can't turn that. Now, I could probably put some vice grips on there and break it loose and turn it. Because the instructions do say to let it sit for 24 hours. And I will do that. But it's feeling pretty good. So this is how this is going to work. This is uh, pretty simple. The knob is going to spin on here. Raise this to whatever height you want, tighten up the knob, and that's going to hold our tabletop. Now, this was the original concept of my design, but the more and more I kept looking at my saw stop table saw, I more and more kept seeing that beautiful glossy black finish that they put on a lot of the parts. So I decided to dress this up a little bit. I drew up the dimensions and the design of this and a buddy of mine cut this out of steel. It's about 3 sixteenths of an inch thick and it has a nice curve at the top and the bottom and in the slot and the slot matches the slot in the wood. Now after he made these up I put a first coat of black lacquer on here and then I drilled out the holes for the screws that will mount this. Then I chamfered those holes so that the screws will sit flush with the surface. Now I've put another coat of lacquer on and I've also put a coat of lacquer on the heads of the screws. I need to polish this one more time and put another coat of lacquer on it, but I just wanted to show you basically what the concept was and what this will look like. Basically it'll go on just like this. It'll get screwed into the leg, and then the knob will go on, 
and when you raise up the table now you'll be locking that knob into a piece of steel but more importantly I just kind of thought it dressed it up a little bit now you could uh, do this if you wanted to you don't have to I will put the drawing in with the other documentation that you can download off my website and you could have these made up yourself and I think if you do what I did and just have them cut out in, in the uh, groove cut and then do the holes and the chamfers yourself, it'd probably be pretty inexpensive. Anyway, I need to let these sit overnight. So the next thing we're going to do is get started on the two tops that we're going to build for this. So let's get going on that. The fact of the matter is, I've kind of anguished over this one dimension a little bit, probably more than I should have. We know that the outside corner to corner measurement of this cabinet is 21 inches. And the question is, is how much bigger to make the top so that there's clearance? The top is going to be two pieces of sandwiched together plywood with an edge on it that extends down past the plywood so that it'll kind of nest over the corners like this and it'll come down about probably about halfway down this face frame so something like that and we'd like the uh, top to rest as close to the top of the legs as possible so I thought about well should I add a quarter of an inch in all dimensions meaning make it a half an inch bigger and that'd be kind of sloppy and I'm starting to run close on space underneath so what I finally decided to do since this measures 21 I'm gonna make it 21 and a quarter that's an eighth inch additional clearance on all four sides so we will make this 21 and a quarter by 21 and a quarter and hopefully that'll work out okay so let's get started cutting out the parts for that okay I've got a pretty ragged piece of half inch plywood but we're going to make the best of a bad situation here i've set the fence we want our square to wind up 21 and a quarter by 21 and a quarter so i've set my fence at 22 and a quarter and i've got the factory edge that i'm going to run along the fence we're going to hope that that's straight <laughs> never a good thing to hope for that but we're going to try and we're going to make our first cut okay we've got one side of this with a nice clean cut now so what I want to do now is cut this a little bit oversized but get a good clean edge on the other side. So we want a finished dimension of 21 and a quarter. I'm going to just set this at 21 and a half just to get this more down to the size we need. Okay, I've got two parallel edges here, but no one knows about these. So I've set the fence back at 22 and a quarter. I'm going to cut one edge and then I'm going to flip it over, cut it down a little bit more and square that up. Okay, now I'm going to take this uh, just cut, cut edge and put it up to the fence. And I'm going to take this down to also 21 and a half. There'll be a method to my madness here in a second. All right, so I have one pretty decent looking piece of plywood here, but just one. And I'm actually gonna need four of these. Just making sure we didn't create a parallelogram or whatever that's called. I didn't want it to be out of square. Okay, so now this is oversized, but it's square, and all the edges are good, and it looks pretty good. 
So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to use these other pieces and I'm going to make three more just like this. All right, so I've got four panels prepared. They are 21 and a half by 21 and a half. So they need to be trimmed down to the final 21 and a quarter. But I've found over time that trying to glue panels together like this and get the edges perfect is very difficult. So what I'm going to work on is getting two of the edges aligned perfectly and then we'll be able to trim the other two edges to get it down to size and get a nice perfect edge all the way around. So what we're going to do is we're just going to spread some glue on here nice and quick. Yeah, da -da -da. This is where you get to be kind of fun and creative here. Maybe I should have drawn something. With my drawing ability, you'd never be able to tell what it was anyway. And I'm just going to use a little scrap piece of wood here and just spread this out. And this doesn't have to be perfect. Remember you're gluing face veneer to face veneer, so it's not going to be very structurally strong anyway. So there's no sense getting all crazy with it, but we do want to get some around the edges and make sure those are covered. And we'll get a little more here where it's kind of thin. And that should do it. You need to kind of work kind of fast because we're also going to sandwich the two pairs together in clamps. Make sure all the sawdust is off of it. And we'll put this together, line this up the best way we can, and set that aside just for a minute. And we'll get our next pair. Now I've got these turned where the apparent grain is running different directions. We'll do the same thing here. Let's get this over here. And now we're going to take and put it on top of here. And we're going to stand these up. And that's going to get the bottom edges aligned. And we'll get these as close as we can over here. Okay. And I'm just going to put some spring clamps on here. Now, let's get this edge lined up. And that's pretty easy to do. I'm going to press these down. And then I'm going to just look. Yep, yeah, that looks pretty good. And now we'll spring clamp this together. All right, now. These are my little riser blocks. These are just some scraps of two by six lumber. Put those down there. And I'm gonna check this edge. This edge is lined up. This edge is not. And this edge over here is. So we've got two edges that are good and lined up. And we'll just mark those so we don't forget. And now, I need to get some clamps down here. All right, I'm going to now throw some weight on the top of this. I'm going to go get some serious weight to put on here because we've got our uh, wood blocks underneath, and that'll make sure the center gets glued together real good. I'm going to let this set up overnight, and then we'll get started dressing the edges. Okay, after I got the uh, plywood sandwiches out of the clamps, I went to the table saw and trimmed the edges so that we had nice, beautiful, flush edges. Now remember, that was two pieces of half-inch plywood sandwiched together to make a one-inch thick top. 
Now what I want to do is I'm going to use some walnut. You could actually use anything, but I had used walnut on the saw stop outfeed table for trim. So I'm going to use walnut for trim here. I have ripped some pieces down to an inch and three quarters. These are three quarter inch thick pieces of material. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut miters in the corners and these will get glued around the edges of the top. And that's going to dress it up, but it's also because this is one and three quarters of an inch thick. This is going to hang down smidge over three quarters of an inch below the top and it'll form kind of a lip all the way around so that when it's in its down position, the top can't shift on the cabinet. It'll be sort of locked into place. I've got the uh, top pieces oriented. You notice I've labeled this bottom. That's because this side of the plywood is better looking. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to glue on this trim one piece at a time. It only take a few extra minutes to do it that way. And it's just better than cutting out all the pieces at one time. And then maybe one of them being wrong, <laughs> which wouldn't be a great thing. So I'm just going to spread some glue on here and then I will uh, drop it into the clamps for 15 or 20 minutes and then glue on the next piece. And I'll get uh, hopefully nice tight miter corners by doing it that way. I don't really care if there's some squeeze out. I'm going to sand the top of this and on the bottom it won't show. So I want to get enough glue on here where we get a good attachment. And since it's attaching to the edge of the plywood, which is essentially the cores, the interior cores of the plywood, the bond will be quite good. So I'm just going to set that down there. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this in and just get the interior corners lined up on these miters. Yeah, that looks good. And we'll just let that sit for a few minutes. I just want to make sure that what is going to be the top edges are carefully aligned. So I'm pushing down on that onto my outfeed table, which I know is flat, and that'll make sure that those stay flat. And there we go. I just need to do this seven more times. Well, I guess if you need to put your new in-feed, multi-purpose storage cabinet and work table someplace while you're working on another project, you might as well put it where it's going to go. This fits underneath the wing of my table saw just perfectly, rolls in and out quite easily, and I can push it back far enough that the wheels won't interfere with my toes while I'm working at the table saw. I think this is going to work out really good. Now in the next video, we'll finish up the two tops, and I'll show you why I'm making a second top. And I'll try to get some finish on this and put those decorative metal pieces on here. And we can kind of play with the adjustment of the uh, height of the top. I may not in this video series do the drawer and the door. You've seen me do drawers and doors many different times. I will show you though a little bit different uh, hardware that I'm going to be using in this. So that'll pretty much wrap up this video series next time. I really do appreciate you bearing with me through all these videos and watching this series. And I hope you will build one of these cabinets to go under the wing of your table saw. Thank you so very much for watching and I'll look forward to seeing you in the next video.